Okay, uh, the reason for me doing this video is uh, for not just for Year 11 students or students taking their GCSEs, it's actually for, for all students uh, and parents. These are revision tips. Um, we will talk about how to revise um, uh, techniques and strategies, but actually this, these are the easy wins. Some people may call them marginal gains, but what I see them as is all students should be doing these 10 things and it'll put them in a really good place in terms of being successful in their summer exams. This isn't aimed at A stars, this isn't aimed at C grades, this is aimed at all students, wherever they want to get to, whatever line they want to get across. If they do these things, I'm very confident that these will help them in achieving the goals and targets and grades that they will deserve in the summer. This video is about uh, tips for revision. I'm also going to do a uh, video on the exam because I do think students get themselves well placed. They do their revision, they go into the exam and they may have a freeze. They may forget how to do something. That last 10 minutes of the exam, what do they do? So that will be the second video. This is just simply about revision, about getting themselves in place. So the first tip, a timetable and a schedule. This is absolutely vital, possibly the most important thing in terms of spacing your revision and making sure that you're not at the last minute panicking and cramming and working through the night because that's not healthy and it won't put you in the right frame of mind for the exam itself. Two things you need to do. The first is to get a planner, a weekly planner, something like this. And all the planner has to have on it is each day of the week and block time as to when you can revise and when you can't. So for example, this is when you're at school. Obviously in holidays, that green is removed because it's your time. You can then block out other things that you're doing, so at the weekend you may be playing sport, visiting family, you may have commitments after school, eating obviously, maybe watching your favourite television programme, getting up in the morning having your breakfast. All of these things are times that you can't revise. As a rule of thumb, we would suggest that you're doing three hours extra revision every night if you're a GCSE student, if you're in year 11. That would include homeworks, and of course, you'd be doing a little bit more over the weekends. Once you've planned what you, when you can't revise, what you now need to do is put in when you're going to revise. And the most important thing is, then you stick to it. So here you can see this student is going to do some morning sessions, some after school sessions, and then the red is when they're going to work at home. You can see that they're staying behind school for two hours after school on Wednesday, so then they're not doing anything that evening. And all these blanks are also free time. Really, really important. And then you can see at the weekend, they're blocking out Sunday morning, Sunday evening, and Saturday morning as well. <clears throat> as well as your weekly planner, I strongly suggest that you have a calendar going from the, the last few months up to the exam, up to your last exam. So it shows the whole month. The way that we do this, you um, have all the, 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 uh, the dates, and then you can plan exactly what you're doing and when you're doing it, alongside your weekly planner. So when you get your timetable, whether it be a PPE, which is a pre-public exam, a mock, once you get that, you will see that you've got your subjects and you've got the days they're on, and equally important, the time they start and how long they're on for. Once you've got that, put it into your calendar, and then you can start to plan when you're going to study. So for your GCSEs in the summer, you may have your first exam maybe four weeks before your final exam. If your final exam is geography, first exam is English literature, Obviously you need to concentrate on your literature, you may not need to do as much geography at that moment in time. So you use this area here to tell you exactly what you're going to study. So when you have your planner and you have the calendar next to each other, you'll be able to see, right, I've got English literature on Monday, I need to be doing English literature revision on this weekend. Second tip is your pre-study routines. Again, really, really important and they're easy wins. Everyone can do them. The first one is your study environment at home. You need a desk, you need a chair, and you need that room to be tidy. You do not revise lying on a bed because you won't take your exam lying on a bed. So you need to have a desk and a chair and be organised. Then you know where all your revision aids are. Something like this, ideal environment to study at home. It needs to be silent. And if your room is very busy, if your house is very busy, uh, you may have younger siblings, for example, then why not take yourself off somewhere else that is silent, that does have a, uh, a study area, does have a chair, does have a desk. Ideal place is your local library. It's a real debate, music or no music. I'm a no music person, but people are different. And throughout this presentation, these tips are for people to decide what's best for them. If you're music, don't put lyrics on. You will find yourself uh, singing along to the song, and if you're singing along to a song, you can't revise. 
People would say, and research will say, that classical music, whilst it's not a 16-year-old's thing necessarily, is much better, more soothing, and it's still music in the background. But do not put music that has lyrics on. Huge tip, your phones. They could be the making or breaking of a student in their final exams. Do not take your phone to your room, especially when you are advising. Turn it off, but better still, leave it somewhere else. Have a drink, preferably water. You need to hydrate your brain, hydrate your thinking. Uh, so make sure on that study desk, there's a cup of water. Also, have a snack. Put a healthy snack on there. There's nothing wrong with eating an apple, having a cup of water whilst you are revising. Finally, use a pen. Sounds strange, but you're gonna use one in an exam. If you do your revision on a computer, and then you go into the exam and you've got to hold a pen and write lengthy pieces. It's very, very different. So please make sure you use paper and pen when you're revising, not just your computer. Finally, a timer, and we'll talk about that in a second. Go through those. You need to visualise, almost close your eyes, visualise your current study space at home. What does it look like? Can you do all these things? And when they're all ticked, then you've got the ideal study environment. So you've got your planner, You've got your calendar, you've got your desk, your chair, the room's tidy, and you're good to go. So the timer, Pomodoro. Pomodoro is Italian for tomato. And the reason that we talk about Pomodoros is you can see this timer shaped like a tomato, hence the word Pomodoro. And you set yourself a time of how long you're going to study. Because we all have limitations, we all have breaking points. And a breaking point for revision is 25 minute block. So you set your Pomodoro timer, 25 minutes. At the end of that time, you have a 5 or 10 minute break, and then you go back and do another 25 minutes. A brilliant tip would be that you use, leave your phone downstairs, do 25 minutes, and then you can go and have 5 or 10 minutes in your phone if that's what you need or want to do. Then you go back to study and do another 25 minutes. Once you've done two or three Pomodoro sessions, you can then build in a slightly longer break. Tip four, session goals and mini whiteboards. Really, really important. Mini whiteboards are very powerful. What I would suggest, again, on your desk, is have a mini whiteboard and you write down a session goal, a Pomodoro 25 minute goal. Okay, so it could be a question. Um, uh, how do you use factors in mathematics to solve equations? You write that question on there, you do 25 minutes, and once you finish, then you try and answer the question. And if you can, reward yourself. Forget the healthy snack, go and have a bar of chocolate. Whatever you want to do to reward yourself, but please use your whiteboard as your session goal. And each session, ask yourselves a question, and by the end of it, you need to be able to answer it. You can also, if you haven't got whiteboards, you can also simply use sticky notes. Just put a sticky note and write it down on paper. You can also use them for motivational uh, tools. Okay, so on the, on the whiteboard, write down, keep going, never give up, stay focused. These motivational, I'm sure you've all heard of. A few on the internet that we found that also you can, you know, ask other people to write a motivational thing down for you. Or perhaps write something that's a little bit amusing. Friday is a gazelle, you are a tiger, take it down. Lick the back of your hand, that's what a winner tastes like. Put them on your whiteboard and when you're feeling a little bit lethargic, look at that and hopefully it'll give you a start to get through your session. Tip five is use colour. Some researchers don't use colour because it can be lazy. You need to use colour properly. If you go through a book and just highlight you're not remembering, you're just simply highlighting keywords. What you need to use colour for is to highlight some of the notes you've already taken, use different coloured paper for different, uh, uh, for different topics, and then you'll remember them and recall them by the colour as well as the information. Study techniques and strategies, flashcards, mind maps, reading, writing, discussing, drawing, revision guides, there's a whole plethora of how to revise. What I would say to you is very straightforward. Do what best suits you. All students are different, so you've got to find the best way to study. There should be no video saying you must study in this way, because you are all different. So what I would say to you is, um, try them all, see what's best, maybe mix them up as well. It relieves boredom, okay? So you may do some of the study habits, you may do through a mind map, but not all of them. You may do some writing, some long question answering. You may do some reading, you may discuss it with your friends. Either way, I would suggest you mix them all up. On that, you must practice exactly what you're going to do in the exam, what you're going to be asked in the exam. So if it's a six question answer and they're going to expect you to write two or three paragraphs, eight, nine, ten, twelve lines, whatever it may be, then that's how you should revise. Again, just highlighting words and then you go into an exam hall and you've got to write a long chunk of writing 
will not remember how that's going to look like. So please make sure you practice what you're doing and what you're going to be asked to do in the exam. You are not going to be asked to make a poster or a mind map in the exam, so you can't simply pick that up from memory and put it onto your exam paper. Blocking versus interweaving. We've talked about your, your sessions, we've talked about your planner and how you're going to do a chunk of time but broken up into little areas of time. Well, let's look at subjects. We talked about English literature, the Sunday and the Saturday before you've got the exam, maybe on the Monday. How are you going to revise the topics? You could look at six topics and do one, then two, then three, then four, then five, then six. My concern would be, once you finish six, can you remember one? So that's blocking. Interweaving is do short chunks of each topic and continue to do them. So when you get to the end here, you can see that topic one was only done maybe in the last session or the session before last. So you remember everything. Again, use your whiteboards to test you. Don't just do one topic and test yourself and then leave it because is that in your long-term memory? Keep testing yourself, keep asking questions. On that, testing, the best way to test is through exam, as exam past papers. They're the format you're going to have, they're the style of question, they're time pressured, they're actual questions. So test, test, test yourself. Again, don't rely just on past papers. But absolutely, you must use past papers and look through them, start to answer those questions and give them to your teachers and say that you, know, you need that marked, can you mark that, is that right? Have I got eight marks out of eight? Have I got four out of four? If you haven't, what have you got uh, wrong? What are your gaps? And then look to fill them. Tip eight is energise. Really, really important that you take breaks. Not just five minute breaks here and there. Build into your time to have to do some activity, do some fun things. You may walk the dog, you may go for a run. People say stress relief, yoga is the best form of stress relief, so maybe you want to look at doing that. But please, please, block in some time to enjoy yourselves. So if you are going to work on a Sunday, then maybe on Saturday you plan to do something with your friends or with your family. Tip 9, sleep and eat. Put simply, you've just got to do both. You really, really need to do both. I would suggest 9.30 is a reasonable time for people to go to bed. Now, that's very difficult for me to say that, because I'm not here to parent everyone and throw a blanket over everyone. Some people bodies are slightly different, their body clocks are slightly different. But I think 9.30 is, is a fair time to say, right, you're now going to bed. The more important thing is, you never, ever, ever take your phone to your bedroom. That is a habit that you need to break. Leave it downstairs with your parents or carers, leave the phone downstairs, so when you do go to bed, you may read for a little bit, but you'll be asleep within 30 minutes, 45 minutes of going to bed. Otherwise, half nine you may go to bed, and you're not actually falling asleep till gone midnight, which is far too late if you want your brain to function first thing in the morning. Research will show that you only need seven to nine hours sleep each day. I say only, you must have that sleep. And when you have that sleep is really important. Because if you go to bed at 12, one o'clock, that means you're not going to be getting up till nine, 10 o'clock the next day and you've wasted a block of time. So think about seven to nine hours. If I go to bed at this time, what time will I need to get up? So if you went to sleep at 10.30, you know, bed at 9.30, sleep at 10.30, you be up by half seven, which you do on a school night. My suggestion is you do exactly the same over a weekend. Why would you not? This might be you on a Saturday and Sunday morning. This is a habit you have to break. How can you break it? I ask parents on a Saturday and Sunday, why not make a special breakfast? So at eight o'clock, this will be waiting for you downstairs. And it might be that nudge to get yourselves out of bed, have a nice breakfast, and then start your revision. Talking of weekends, I strongly suggest, suggest that you split them into thirds. A weekend comes in three, a day comes in three, morning, afternoon and evening. If you do this, I would suggest you do three thirds of revision every weekend. So you may do on a Saturday, the morning, but you're going to go to uh, see your friends in the afternoon. So you're going to go shopping, so you can't do any there. And actually your favourite TV programs are on a Saturday night and you want to spend some time with your family. So you've done one third on the Saturday, therefore you need to do two thirds on a Sunday. So you get up early, you do your morning. You maybe do something in the afternoon, so you need to do the evening. Some people may say, well, I'm, I'm out all day Sunday. Then I'd suggest you work on Saturday. Two thirds, three thirds of revision every weekend. The last tip, the frog and the dog. Really, really important. <coughs> There's a phrase, eat the frog. And eat the frog means, if you, eat, if you had to eat a live frog every day, the best time to do it is eat it first thing in the morning. Because then the rest of the day, nothing will be as bad as that. And what they're saying there is, First thing in the morning, if you've got some revision, you have to do the difficult revision, the bit that you don't know, and there's another tip, don't revise things you know, that's a fault, uh, many students fall into that trap, they start to revise things, oh I like this element of geography, so I'll revise that. That's not eating the frog, eating the frog's doing the opposite, revise the bit you really, really don't like, 
first thing in the morning, first Pomodoro, eat the frog. The dog, Pavlov is, Pavlov's dog, it's a theory that what Pavlov did, he um, gave a dog a, a bowl of food. And before the dog was allowed to eat it, the dog started salivating. He then rang a bell. The dog didn't salivate. So he then rang a bell and held the food, and the dog started salivating, because the dog thought, if he rings the bell, I'll get my food. Then he rang the bell without the food, but the dog started salivating. Now the point of this in terms of revision is that you need to reprogram yourselves. And if you think about everything we've just discussed, it's about reprogramming all your routines to get up earlier, to make sure your room's tidy, to make sure that you're working in silence, to leave your phones downstairs. You are being Pavlovian, because in school, that's exactly what you do. If your first lesson is at 8.30, a bell goes, everyone moves to lesson. Then at 9.30, there's another bell, and you move to another lesson. Then at 10.30, you'll go to break. Then at 10.50, you are Pavlovian, because you have a reaction to that bell in school. You go to lessons. Dinner halls are full at lunchtime. Two minutes after the bell, they are empty. That's because students are Pavlovian, as are teachers. Well, what I want to do is say, do the same at home. Be Pavlovian. Get up early and build that into your routine. So, do the hard stuff first. Really important. Eat the frog and recondition and reprogram your daily and weekly routines, especially when and if you have study leave and especially when you have holidays, half terms, Easter and so on and so forth. So, we go over the tips. First one, timetable and schedule, really important. You can all do it, everyone can. Pre-study routines, create the optimum study environment that you can in your home. Pomodoro, break up your sessions shorter. They call them time boxes, 25 minute time box. Have a session goal, use a mini whiteboard um, um, and put questions on there as well, motivational things, anything that's gonna keep you going. Use color but in the right way. All these strategies, try them all, see which fits. Try different ones, use different ones, because your memory will jump back to the ones that you use. Pass papers and interleaving. Test, test, test. If the exam's a test, you've got to practice being test, being tested. Energise, make sure you take breaks. Plan some fun time, really important. We don't want you going to an exam stressed. We want you to go into an exam feeling almost confident and happy and de-stressed, ready to do that exam. Sleep and eat, no phones in bedrooms, ever, ever. Do never take your phone to your bedroom until your final exam and then you can do whatever your parents, your carers, and you decide is best for you on that big summer holiday you're going to get and earn. And finally, the frog and the dog. Eat the frog and change your daily routines. Save the best tip to last. Everyone can do those. Whatever age, whatever stage, whatever grades you're going for, everyone can do those tips. And I couldn't ask you, beg you, whatever it takes for you to follow those. You need to do them and everyone can. Most important thing is you start doing them now. Thank you very much for listening, and I hope if you do these and you put the effort in, you get the results you deserve. Thank you.